Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome to Muslima Insight with me, your host, Adila Amod, for the next hour or so. In today's program of Muslima Insight, we are continuing our journey of self discovery, personal development, and life transformation. And we are going to look at a very important topic today, and it is about the self concept how we as parents, as educators, and adults in general can assist to foster a healthy self concept in the lives of our children. And with me in studio today, I've got two very lovely guests that's going to share with us their knowledge and their insight on this very important topic because ultimately we are raising tomorrow's future leaders and tomorrow's future adults in general. And with me in studio, I would like to welcome these two lovely ladies that is with me today. On my left, I've got Razia Mohammed, who is a registered um, psychological counsellor. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. And she's also a life coach and wellness coach. Welcome and thank you for coming through. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. Shukran. And then we've got also the lovely Dolly Ayoub, Dolly Ayoub correct? Yes, and she's right. also a registered psychological counsellor. Um, and she's also a student advisor at the University of Pretoria. Is that correct? That's correct. Salam, yeah. as- salam alaikum and welcome. Salam. Thanks for having me too. I really um, appreciate you taking time out, out of your schedules to be with us today. Um, as you have heard in my opening comments, obviously to, to raise a child with a healthy self-esteem is important um, and self-concept as a whole. And I think we need to just, for the sake of our viewers, just differentiate a bit. What, what does it actually mean when we talk about self-concept? Okay, I would say uh, self-concept is a, a view you have about yourself. Mm-hmm. And children have a, a self-concept quite early in their childhood. They start developing a view of themselves. Mm-hmm. And that develops from the people around them. Mm-hmm and how people around them make them feel. So would you say it is, it, uh, when you say early, how early w- do you think they start becoming aware of, of that? I would say from uh, the time they, a few months old actually, because mm-hmm. a baby smiles and mommy reacts. And so automatically you're starting to feel, if I do something, this is how mommy is going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and that obviously continues towards middle childhood and as children become more independent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and children are very perceptive and they pick up very quickly how someone's feeling about them. Mm-hmm. So would you say it is, it is how people react towards them as well as then how they internalize and what they start seeing themselves as? Absolutely, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And Rosia? I would say that uh, perception is projection. Mm-hmm. So in, that would mean that what you are on the inside, it would project on the outside. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. from the onset, if you are a caregiver or, or if you are a parent to this child mm-hmm. and you give this child a negative self-image, mm-hmm. it's going to project yes. and they will never be productive individuals. Yeah. So ultimately, if I understand you correctly, we all experience life with our five senses. Yes. So if a little child or a little baby for that sake experiences negativity, um, the mother, uh, the uh, the baby cries, but the mother just looks. There isn't that that bond or that rapport or that positive reaction. Yes. It impacts on what the child grows up believing and seeing him or herself as as perhaps un, unimportant, unworthy, mm. not good enough. Is is that ultimately what we can call? It's the concept of how the child or the person sees himself to be and believe himself to yes. be. Would would that be correct? And he would obviously uh, base his assumptions on what he is according to the older individual. Because okay. what we do is we look up to the older individual to tell us how to love, to tell us how to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is how you would project yourself. That is why negative words, negative statements mm-hmm. to a child is detrimental. Detrimental, mm-hmm. absolutely. And and if we, if we take this a little bit further, um, uh, why is it so important touching on this and we're going to get to the reasons and how we can things that we should be aware of like statements is um, why is it so important for us to have a positive self-concept and to raise our children with a, a positive self-concept? I, I, I would just say if you don't have a positive self-concept you're not going to be able to achieve very much in your life because you don't believe in yourself. 
-hmm. So you're not going to try new things. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have the confidence. Mm -hmm. And so that's obviously going to impact you, not only when you're quite small, mm -hmm. but continuing into your uh, adulthood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would say um, what you think you are, you are. Mm -hmm. No you one are. can do anything to you without your consent. Mm -hmm. So as a child, if this child is looking up to the, the teacher, the parent, the caregiver, and what they are, feedback they are getting about themselves mm -hmm. from the, the caregiver, mm -hmm. they are going to believe it. Of course. And so it becomes their reality. Yes. yes. Because they're obviously looking at the teacher or the parent right. as the authoritative figure that yes. knows better, that's supposed to know better, yes. exactly. and they're going to buy into that. Would you say that... Um, a negative self-concept, obviously we can see it's going to affect the behavior mm -hmm. of a person throughout their lives yes. and yes. also in their relationships with other people. How yeah. would you say a negative uh, self-concept uh, projects into all of, all of these things, how we go through life? Well, I think the, 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 the first thing that shouts out at me is insecurity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone with a negative self-concept is very insecure. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to you're not going to be feeling confident to be able to do anything. You're going to start comparing yourself to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And you're not going... So children like that can either withdraw into themselves or they can act out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have one or the other scenario. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and it, it's a very difficult situation for parents also because parents don't realize yeah. the impact they're having the impact, yeah. on the yeah. child. Absolutely. And I would say added to insecurity is low self-esteem, mm -hmm. low self-confidence. Mm -hmm. When you have low self-confidence, when you don't give your child the tools of the mind, basically, mm -hmm. to go out there, because you can't be with that child 24-7. Absolutely. Yeah. So now when you don't give the child the tools of the mind, mm -hmm. he's susceptible to go out there and do wrong. Yeah. Whereas if he is in wrong company or she is in wrong company, mm -hmm. but you have given the tools of the mind, mm -hmm. they are able to differentiate between right and mm -hmm. wrong and make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Would you say that, uh, for, for the sake of our viewers, mm -hmm. um, can, we, can we sort of list some key components? What would be the makeup of a child with a negative self-concept you know many times we as parents i mean par all people are not in the field of psychology or life coaching yeah. etc yeah. and for the lay person on the street what can they look out for um, in their children to see what is is my child okay or yeah. is he suffering yes. with a low self-concept or low self-belief system what can they look out for it actually stands out quite clearly a child with a negative self-concept if you even look at a child with a, a very negative self-concept, you'll, you'll, you'll find a child that's quite withdrawn, mm -hmm. or like I said earlier, someone who's acting out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when it comes to tasks, to doing things, okay. they'll give up very quickly. Yeah. They won't continue, they won't yeah. finish. Well, would you say it's more the pessimistic child, the child that's demotivated, tends to become depressed? Yes, that, uh, that is one aspect of it. Okay. You, and you do also get the child who would... People, a parent would say is a naughty child. We mm -hmm. don't use the word naughty. Mm -hmm. But acting out, looking for attention. The bully, perhaps, in, also, the, in the classroom? Yeah, mm -hmm. because remember, bullies are children who actually, if they can't achieve something, they go out and make sure nobody else is achieving it. Mm -hmm. So the insecurity manifests mm -hmm. there quite strongly. And would you say it also perhaps stems from that anger from within, that yes. they're angry at themselves for not being good enough. And yeah. I mean, those behavioral patterns, obviously, is going to continue throughout life. Absolutely. I think not feeling good enough is, is something that's going to affect them throughout. Yeah. So it can either yeah. be very detrimental and, and uh, very inhibiting to, yeah. to their full potential. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that a negative self-concept in a child where he doesn't feel good enough, where he's always told negative things, mm -hmm. turns him or her into a negative adult. Mm -hmm. And then what would happen with that behavioral wise is he would be turned from aggression mm -hmm. to passive mm -hmm. to remorseful. Mm -hmm. And that would be the, the ongoing pattern ongoing that factor. just goes on and on until he decides it's a problem and he breaks the chain. Okay, shukran for that. I really appreciate it. It's time for us to go to a short break. Don't go away.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. In today's program, we are looking at how we as adults can foster a healthy self-concept into the lives and psyche of our children because ultimately they are tomorrow's future leaders and future adults that has to run and rule this world. And with me in studio, I've got two very lovely ladies that is sharing with us their insight and their knowledge to expand all our knowledge and how we can really assist in this process. Before the break, we were discussing um, how we as parents and adults in general can actually identify when our child is in a place of a low self-concept, a low self-esteem. Are there some examples that you've come across in your uh, respective practices that um, we can relate to the viewers? Yes, I've come across many case studies as far as kids go because what they would do is they would either act out by being the bully, mm -hmm. the abused, or they would be the abuser. Mm -hmm. I would like to give you an example of um, just something random. Mm -hmm. um, it's like this. If a child drops something on the floor, mm -hmm. what is the parent's first reaction? Mm -hmm. You're stupid, you're an idiot, you will never amount to nothing. Mm -hmm. In under five seconds, you have managed to make the child believe that he will never amount to anything. anything. So whatever he accomplishes in life will never be good enough for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the flip side of the coin. Mm -hmm. Child drops something on the floor. What you do is say, well, that was silly. Mm -hmm. Let's clean it up together. Mm -hmm. so oh, it's an accident. It yes, can happen exactly. to anybody. Make so, light of it. Yes. In under because it minute, is. It is. Mm. In under a minute, what you have succeeded in doing mm -hmm. is saying that, you know what, there's always someone to help you. Mm -hmm. And when you make a mess, you clean it up. Mm -hmm. The responsibility. Yes. Because that, well, that what we, when we speak about a child with a healthy self-concept, mm -hmm. they come with these, uh, these attributes yes. where when something goes wrong, they take responsibility yes. and they make amends exactly. or they mm -hmm. apologize, whatever the case is. Um, if a child has got a more positive self-concept, mm -hmm. how would that child's behavior be in comparison to what we've discussed previously? I, I would say, Adila, the first thing that uh, also would occur to me in this situation, I would say, if you have a positive self-esteem, mm -hmm. you're going to feel confident to try new things. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the one thing that really stands out is that children with a positive self-concept mm -hmm. are able to deal with failure. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. Absolutely. Because we as parents want to protect our children mm -hmm. and we don't want them to go through anything mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. But life is such, you're going to experience failures in school yeah. and uh, in relationships with your friends, with family, there are going to th be things that you're going to mm -hmm. be confronted with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the positive child is going to be, will feel sad because we mustn't forget that if you're left out of something, you're going to feel that emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel sad, mm -hmm. but you'll deal with it, talk about it and get, oh, get through it. And that's what you want for your child. Yeah. You, want, you want your child to be able to get through those uh, different life events. Different and this events, is the next yeah. question that comes to my mind is, we as parents, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, we send our children off to school, we're trusting that they're in good hands and they'll be well cared for. Now, there's not always an adult or adult supervision, mm. yes. where a child is protected from such life events. I mean, simple things um, on, a, on the playground. Mm. They are selecting teams to play soccer or whatever yeah. game, yeah. and your child is selected last. Yeah. Obviously, it reflects to the child, what's wrong with me? Yes. And, and this is, again, where I would say, what role can a parent play? What can we as parents do to ensure that we know what's going on in our children's lives? Because... If your child comes home, now you're not aware, you come yes. home five o'clock or whenever mm. you knock off from work or you're lucky you may be a, a, a mom that stays mm. at home. What can these parents do on a daily basis to ensure that they know what happened in my child's life today? Mm. Because we're not always there. You see, if you are a parent that is your, a friend to their child, but with boundaries and limits. Mm -hmm. So there are times when the child knows that, okay, this is my mum or my dad, mm -hmm. as opposed to be my friend and I can just walk all over him. Mm -hmm. And if you, if the, you are approachable enough, mm -hmm. so the yeah, child yeah. knows that, you know what, if I have an issue, I don't go to a friend mm -hmm. that says, 
well, life is short, let's just do whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a parent that will sit down with the child mm -hmm. constructively and rule number one, don't criticize. Mm. Yeah, the big thing would be yeah. is, is to, for me, what I would say is to ask, mm -hmm. how was your day? Um, what was the best thing? What was the worst thing? And allow that child obviously to come out with what happened. Because how else are we going to pick that up? If you do say, how was your day? Mm -hmm. How you are with the child mm -hmm. will come out as how was your day or how was your day? Mm. To take real interest, interest, like you say, without the judgment, yes. without the criticism, to be open to receive whatever the child went through. Yes. Is, would that be correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I'd like to say, just going back to your example, for example, if your child's been left out of a team or, yes. and the child comes home, whatever time it is, you might be a working mum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Something happened to that child during that time. Mm -hmm. I mean, sitting in school and sitting there and everyone's on the team or some of them on the team and you're sitting there and you're feeling, it's like prize giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a teacher for a while and the worst time for me was prize giving. Yes. Because you have those discrepancies. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's what's life about. Mm -hmm. So going back to the example, what if your child's obviously going through something. So when the child comes home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's going to actually happen? Mm -hmm. How is that child going to interact? There's going to be something that's not right. That's not right. The child is going to the behave differently. Exactly. And the child's not going to come and tell you, mm -hmm. Mommy, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of children don't actually tell their parents what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to actually be sharp enough you, that's to it. be aware yeah. that, look, there's some, my child is not so behaving yes, him or so herself. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask what's going on. How was your day? Mm -hmm. What happened? Uh, so you need to be aware of your child. And I always say yes. some people believe children are pot plants. Yes. You know, here's your yeah. water, here's your food, grow up. Yes. And we need to actually, it, it comes with so much more responsibility. Yes. And, and what would happen for me in a, in a case like that, going back to the scenario, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. child might come home and start hitting his brother or acting out. Mm -hmm. That anger. I, that behavior is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, and I think this is the big thing, we don't realize that emotion that's coming out and being displayed mm -hmm. is the result of something that's happened Hurting. inside. Yes. Yeah, so we get angry and we respond in an angry way and mm -hmm. say to them, stop that, instead of saying, I can see you feeling angry today. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell mommy what happened? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah, so it's basically you know? to look so it's at the way you actually communicate. Yeah, it's to, to be able to recognize the symptom. Yes. If the child is angry yeah. and, uh, you know, that you can see the child is upset, yeah. it's to start to inquire what's going on inside, inside. of the child yeah. and what happened during. And I think what is important, would you agree with me, is that we, in that conversation, mm. Um, like I think what you've alluded to previously, we need to give them the tools yes. Yes. to be able to get through those type yes. of situations. Yeah. And, and a simple thing for me that rings to mind mm -hmm. is um, instead of taking a scenario like that um, student of the week or you can't sit in this place, mm -hmm. it's reserved for somebody else, mm -hmm. to take it as it's just their opinion, mm -hmm. um, yes. not to take it as a judgment. Mm -hmm. And it's those very small things that we need to start teaching our kids from yes. a young age. Yes. When is and it it's also like uh, judging the action as opposed to judging the person. The person, mm. exactly. Yeah, because that, 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 that rings very true, mm -hmm. you know, that we need to teach our children, look, um, that is a situation that it's not reflective of you as, as an individual. Yes, exactly. uh, and always to hold on and to know who they are. Mm. And that's why that self belief is so important yes. so that the child if he knows my truth mm. is that I am confident or I am good at this or I am good at that so if they don't accept me that's fine mm. yes. I know what I stand yeah, for I you know so that for me is is very very important um, going a little bit further we you mentioned about statements and these type of things uh, we've mentioned about um, the life events that can happen and what we should do coming back to those type of statements um, can we elaborate a little bit more? Many people are guilty of that. Oh, yeah. We um, oh, just grow up, you know, or yes. I wish I had a boy, yes. you know, and these yes. things actually really hits the, the heart of a child. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, it's unfortunately time for us to mm -hmm. take a short break. I'm sorry to cut you off <laughs> there. We are going to come back to this question after the break.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Before the break, I left our viewers and the lovely guests I have here today in asking them if we can elaborate more on statements and things that adults actually say to children that are detrimental to their self-concept. Can we have a few more examples for people to just become aware of the words they use on their children? Something I'd like to reiterate is that when you criticize your child in front of other people, yes, that, that brings hugely... about a very, very negative self-concept. Mm -hmm. Because firstly, it shows your lack of respect for the child. Mm -hmm. And also you trying to tell the child that, you know what, I need to tell everyone how useless you are or how bad you how are how bad you are so the how worthless you are so th that effect of that is even more it's worse less. it's more than having a one-on-one -on -one interaction mm -hmm. once you add a third person into that interaction mm -hmm. you're doing far more damage than what mm -hmm. you ever realize so you and would you actually say that it breaks that it, it causes a child to move away from you yes um there's less trust from the child uh, to the parent mm. because he wants to come to you he mm. or she wants to you come are his to parent you, exactly but mm. he doesn't know who you're going to relate the yeah. story yeah. to and how you're going to react yeah. and then the older they get the more they hide yeah and then you mm. wonder where have i gone wrong yes Yes, and that is so important, yeah. Yeah. you know, that is an absolute crucial point because of the embarrassment that comes with an event like that. Yeah. 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 Adila, I would just say, I think, we, and we teach it also in our parent workshops, mm. uh, parents are used to talking to, your, to their children and saying, you're lazy, you're stupid, you're silly, mm. you're a failure, mm. you're, done. you're, you're naughty. naughty. Yeah. And we need to start moving away from that. And what we, we tell parents is move away from saying you are this, because that is not the whole child. Mm -hmm. The behavior is what you need to highlight. Yes. This is what you are doing wrong. Yeah. So what we say is move from a you message yes. to a I message. Mm -hmm. I understand you're frustrated today, or I understand you're tired today. Mm -hmm. That's why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you actually reflect on the feeling. Yes. And that's what we don't do. Yeah. We reflect on the behavior as yes. parents. Yeah. And I really believe when you start communicating with your child, you do see a difference because mm -hmm. if you're reflecting on what the child is feeling mm -hmm. and not on the behavior, mm -hmm. you're telling the child, I understand what you're feeling. Yes. And yeah. all of us feel moody. All of us feel tired. We all have a down day. I yes. also say to parents sometimes, Think about what you're saying to your child mm -hmm. and what would you say to a friend in that situation? Mm -hmm. If you're a friend of yours failed a test, would you say you're stupid? Exactly. I always say just take two minutes of your time and think about what you're saying. Yes. Take, take into cognizance the effect it's going to have, have on the child. On the psyche of that child. Absolutely. You have to really, really be aware of these things. Mm -hmm. Listening actively. And we, yes. we say, when we say listen, we all say we listen to our children. But do we listen to our children? Yeah. Really listen to the, mm. the, to the emotional content yeah. of what is happening. Child is going yeah. Through. Yeah. Also, uh, going on to that you and I messages, mm -hmm. if you shift the focus away from the behavior and from the child, and if you say, I feel mm. blah, 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 mm as to what you have done. Yes. So you're shifting the focus of blame away from the child mm -hmm. and you're putting it onto you. Absolutely. To say, I feel this when you do that. Do that. Yeah. So the automatically, it has. Yes, yeah. automatically the child feels, okay, it's not just only my fault. Yeah. Yes. Because she's feeling Or the child this has a choice. Well. Yeah. Okay, instead of me doing it this way, mom, can I do it this can way? Do it you know, way. so the, the child has that opportunity mm. to, to change whatever they're doing or give them a chance to grow yes. and, and develop in that yeah. sense. And tell me, uh, when we talk about, we've, we've now a, uh, spoken a bit about the parental uh, influences and what we can do. And of course, there's a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, we have discussed during the break also how important it is that character building. Um, 
start really from from the cradle. Um, and one of the things that I find um, really also influences the self concept yeah. is what we see in media. Because for a child that oh, yes. doesn't live up to this beautiful yeah. images that we find in yes. media and magazines, um, it again creates a belief system, I'm not good enough, mm. uh, putting the child down. Mm. How can we avoid these type of things from happening? I think from a very young age, I mean, we live in a Western society. Mm -hmm. There's TVs, there's cell phones is the norm. You mm -hmm. can't, a child doesn't live without a cell phone anymore. So you need to to tell the child that, listen, whatever it is that you are seeing mm -hmm. on TV, on movies, on wherever, that is not reality. Mm -hmm. Reality is what is here. Mm -hmm. So you, you should not aspire to look like that person. Mm -hmm. To Because it's, in any case, there's so much airbrushing, hap airbrushing exactly. happening in today's time. I mean, even the lady on the screen doesn't look, look like that exactly. in real life. Yeah, so if they have that concept in their minds mm -hmm. that, you know what, I need to be happy with me. Exactly. So again, it is that fostering of from the parent, the nurturing yes. that the parent has to give the child. You are good enough. Yes. You are pretty enough. Yes. You are clever enough. Yes. So all those messages, again, it stems from, from the parents. From yes. the parent and from a very, very young age. Yeah, absolutely. Like I was saying, <coughs> excuse me. Um, a child's personality is formed between zero and six years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you'll get parents that will cultivate a negative personality trait, yeah. thinking that the child is small, mm -hmm. when in fact, you're actually making that trait a habit. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I, did, I, I would just like to elaborate a little bit on the media mm -hmm. um, yes. aspect. Yes. Um, obviously, we are exposed. Yes, um, on a daily basis. On a daily basis, it's coming at you like this all the time. Mm -hmm. The other thing we also have is social media. Mm. So we have BBM and we have WhatsApp. And I think in today's times, it's even more difficult for parents than it ever has been. Mm. Because we also, besides being bombarded with these messages, mm -hmm. you've got to look in a certain way, you've got to dress in a certain way. Mm. We also have social interactions mm -hmm. not happening between people it's mm -hmm. happening out there mm -hmm. i'll give you an example i was lecturing to a group of students last year mm -hmm. and we were talking about media mm -hmm. i was actually mm -hmm. talking about globalization and one of the students just said to me he said i said has it come to this point that everything happens on facebook everything happens on blackberry mm -hmm. and they said to us yes even when someone breaks up with us in a relationship Wow. We don't get a BBM, sure. we see it on Facebook wow. or we see it on a status update. Sure. So you can imagine the impact that social media actually has on our children mm. when they're small and growing up as well. Because mm. today children by the age of 10 or 11 have a cell phone. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so if my friend's mom bought her something, it's going to be on a status update mm -hmm. or there's going to be a little profile picture. And this, sorry to come in there, this is for me very important mm -hmm. what you're saying mm -hmm. because um, a lot of people raise their kids and it, like you said, mm -hmm. comes from social media, yeah. sometimes not even the parents, no. where it comes about, I have to have the name brand shoe yes. mm -hmm. or the name brand jacket, yeah. you know, and they build their self concept yes. on these materialistic yes. things. And what happens if that falls away and it's no longer available? Yes. You see, for me, again, it goes back to, you know, we as parents, I mean, it's an amount that our kids is a trust from mm -hmm. Allah. So yes. we've got that responsibility to raise them with a proper and a good value system. Yes. Mm. Sorry, so I interrupted you. No, no, no. We prioritize on yes. what is important. Yeah. If we're going to find the name brands important, that is what we're going to get from yeah. our kids. That's yeah. it. As I said in the beginning, perception is projection. Projection, yeah. Also, also I would just yeah. reiterate, sorry, Adina, I would just reiterate that everything goes back to the home. Yeah. That's exactly as much yeah. as we exactly. have media, as much as we have school, our children are all in all these environments. Up to middle childhood, that's about 12, mm -hmm. uh, parents are still the most, um, the, the, the person that children identify with most. Yes. Our children are going to tell you what's going on. They're going to come to you first. And look mm -hmm. at your behavior, yes. how you, what the things you do, yeah. yes. without it being communicated verbally. Yes. So you, as a parent, want to create a home 
where you know the first point of call is you. Yes. yes. And that has to go right up, and it does. Mm. It does. I've seen homes, I've seen children with parents, and children have this relationship, they mm -hmm. have this communication, mm -hmm. and children come and say to their parents, this is where I'm going to be, and you know where they are. I say that to my children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd like to give a little funny example quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a client that I had, and this guy came in and he said that he hit his child for smoking. Mm -hmm. But while he was talking to me, he was, he was smoking. smoking. So how, <laughs> how else must the child uh, behave? Yeah, that's so it's very important that we take a long, hard look in the yeah. mirror and see what we do mm -hmm. in front of our kids. Exactly. It's unfortunately time for us to take another break. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. In today's program, we are looking at how to build a healthy self-concept in our, in, in our children. And with me in studio, I've got Razia as well as Dolly that is sharing with us their views. Continuing on this topic, um, going into a little bit of a different direction, if we consider the human needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, surely if we look at that, obviously for any human being, we want to have food and water and shelter, which is should, once that is um, su sufficiently uh, fulfilled, Basically, we go to the next level, which mm. is to have shelter and security. Mm. And from there, this is where things really can start going wrong in the psyche mm. and in, in this concept, because the next one there is for me social, is social standing, yes. is how well you are accepted. Mm. Can we just elaborate for the viewers how important that sense of belonging, that sense of love and acceptance is for the child to reach to uh, self-esteem and self-actualization? Yeah, if you want to actually get to the top of that pyramid, mm -hmm. you actually have to experience unconditional love. Yes. And that's what parents are there for. Mm -hmm. Parents give you unconditional love, yeah. Yeah. which means parents have to put their expectations aside. Yeah. Unconditional love, if we talk about the concept of love, mm. love is not just a feeling. No. Yes, it's action. And it's it's, it's action. action. So it's unconditional actions it's, of love. Yes. Mm. That we need to, and, and words of love. Yes. So because love is more than just a hug and I love you and I yes. feel it. Mm. Um, and this is what I think our parents need to start getting. Mm. It's the treatment, yes. the behavior. Give an example as well. Um, the child comes home from school mm -hmm. and you're asking the child, how was your day? Mm -hmm. But your back is facing him so, and you're doing something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're asking the child, how was your day? It's like, are you really taking interest? Yeah, exactly. Or are you just asking the question yeah, yeah. because you heard you should ask it? Yeah. Yeah. So something as simple as your body language. Yeah. Yes, I plays a perfect very, very important role. Sure. Your body language actually in communication, words are featureless it's than your body 7%. language. Seven percent. Yes. Yeah. And your body language and your tone of voice. Tone of voice is thirty-eight percent of your communication. Exactly. So yes. your behavior yeah. is the majority part of that. Yes. As opposed to what is coming out of your mouth. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think in this last seg segment of the program, mm -hmm. can we, for the sake of the viewers, come up with some solutions? I mean, we've been talking mm -hmm. through it, you know, on and mm -hmm. off. Um, and, and just to, to start giving them direction um, for parents that perhaps have children mm -hmm. that are five, six years old and the penny drops today or they, or they started to realize, look, what, am, what is it? Is it perhaps me? Am I doing? Yes. What advice can we give them? Because um, I do understand that character building is from zero to six, zero to seven. Um, and yes, it still carries on further in life, oh, yeah. uh, even to the age of 11. Yes. Yes. You still influence the, the character of oh, that child. Yes. So what can we say to parents that are in a situation where the child is a bully, he's violent, mm -hmm. there's a lot of anger, a lot of self-hate, what can that parent now do? I think communicating, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Firstly, look at the child and try and understand why is my child behaving like this. Don't blame, don't criticize, okay. move away from that. Mm -hmm. 
Because once you start doing that, you're already building a negative self-concept. Mm -hmm. And your child is not going to open up to you no. if you are constantly criticizing the child. Yeah. So that negativity is going to perpetuate. Mm -hmm. So we need to move away from that. So communicate, show warmth, show love, show acceptance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, turn disapproval into approval. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm not judging you. I'm judging your action. Mm -hmm. Why have you hit that child? Yeah. Why have you done whatever you've done? Mm -hmm. And then introspect, reflect and look at yourself. Mm -hmm. What have I done to make him that way? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. That personal, that concept of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, if it is a parent that is sitting with a child mm -hmm. that has now been conditioned like this, is, is what you have said mm -hmm. is to go, go back with that unconditional love and acceptance and, and to stand back and start reflecting before you just blurt out yes. in your old ways. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you now want to save your child yeah. from going into a life of being a bully or being a negative exactly. person or depressed kind of yes. a person. So, so what else? We, we spoke about the statements um, that we need to start mm -hmm. to be aware of. We spoke about exactly. media and how important it is to raise our kids with a, with a very important um, value, value system. Yes. Um, what else can we do as parents? I think also you have to also look at situations where it's not going to be that easy for a parent. It's fine for me to sit here and say, be loving, be yeah. warm. Parents are going to be confronted with situations that are not going to be pleasant. Yeah. And what do you do in that situation? So your child comes home from school and is having a tantrum and hitting the brother. The first thing you want to do is either give him a little bit of a smack or shout, shout at him or just tell him to go to his room. We don't want to deal with something when it's that inflated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you do in that situation, you just l calm yourself down a bit mm -hmm. and don't react immediately. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, you'd be a bit more relaxed, relax mm -hmm. yourself and don't react. Mm -hmm. Allow him time to calm himself down mm -hmm. and then bring it up and say to him, you were feeling quite frustrated. You mm -hmm. came back from school. What was going on? Mm -hmm. You know, and, start and probing. try and probing because yes. that's what we don't do. We try and ignore it, mm. and that's going to build up into something else. And if he's got a real problem at school, you're never going to know about it, mm -hmm. and then school's going to become negative for him. Absolutely. So it's important to to take that step because as parents we don't want to. And sometimes you just actually have to be quiet in the moment mm. and just let it be, and then. And let address it. it. Yeah, Just let, let it the emotion come, come out. out. Yes. Yeah. Because it's valid. We can't ignore mm -mm. it. Mm -mm. And to elaborate on that, it's listening skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. As opposed to saying, you know what, I'm the adult and you need to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because age yes. doesn't necessarily make you wise. Yes. Mm -hmm. I yes. always say, if you want to learn about life, watch children play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They play with an innocence that we don't have. Yeah. Very because true. we, they have no hidden agendas. Yeah. If they're playing on a, play, on a playground, mm -hmm. they bring any child and they say, well, this mm. is my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet we will be judgmental, we'll go according to our dogmas, we will be picky, our yeah. personal preferences, yeah. and a child plays with an innocence. Mm -hmm. So if you want to really learn about life, just watch kids. Watch kids. Yeah, I would also say, uh, I, I think it's important because as children grow, we do get to a point where we, we have conflicts that we both feel strongly about. Mm -hmm. So you decide, I don't think my child should have a, a cell phone. Mm -hmm. He's 12, but fine. I, I, I don't think my child should have a cell mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do in that situation? Mm -hmm. And then what the advice I would give to a parent then is to go into problem solving mode. Mm -hmm. You're going to solve this problem together. Yes. And you're going to talk about options. Mm -hmm. So you look at the situation, let's use the example of a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Mommy doesn't want you to have a, a cell phone mm -hmm. for these reasons. Mm -hmm. But I want a cell phone, my friends have cell phones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down together, identify the problem and mm -hmm. think about what can we do about and, it. And sometimes in, in the example that you are giving, mm -hmm. it could simply be that the parent, yes. because of the way they were conditioned, yes. things that happened in their lives, they yes. have got a lack of trusting yes. their child. Yes. And, that's, that's and it's it. so important that your child receives 
Yeah. My mom trusts me. Yeah. It's yes. a responsibility that yeah. you're actually handing to the child. Yeah. And I mean, it again has such an impact on the psyche. Yeah. yeah, it's joint communication because you're actually saying to your child, I understand this is how you're feeling. Mm. This is how mommy is feeling. Mm. How are we going to come together and solve this problem? Mm. Mm. Because it could be from the insecurity of the parent. Yes. Yes. That there's in our situation there's that is actually uncomfortable. And it's like when you, we, your parents do things to suit themselves, mm -hmm. because at one point you'll say, you're small, you need to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Or you'll say, Are you old enough, Why, don't you know any better? Mm -hmm. So you, you're creating confusion within the child. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, Adela, you, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about trust. Yes. Because we, we tend to treat children as if they're small in every way, and yes. they're not. Yeah. We want children not to be on our level in a sense that they can dictate to us, but we want it to be a mutual communication. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what effective parenting is. Mm -hmm. yes. Communicating with your child in a way that you respect your child. So even if your child wants a cell phone and you don't agree with it, yes. you don't have to give in to that, mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. can come to some solution some together. Solution. Absolutely. I'm going to ask uh, both of you just to give to our viewers um, a closing statement mm -hmm. and in how yes. you think that they, uh, well, that we can contribute mm -hmm. to society mm -hmm. so that we can make that difference? I would say that there are three styles of parenting. One is the very authoritative way, my way or no way. Mm -hmm. One is a totally nonchalant way in the sense that just do whatever you want to do, I'm your friend, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one is the very balanced way mm -hmm. where you gain your child's trust, as Dolly said, yeah. and also you gain a friend, mm -hmm. but with a very fine line of being a parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the child is confronted with adversities, with curveballs as such, mm -hmm. the child would in fact want to come to you first. Exactly. As opposed to somebody outside. Or friends. Or yeah, whatever. that yeah. might just give them the wrong advice. Yeah. And as we know, it takes five minutes to do something and a lifetime of regret. So I would say make your child your friend, bring him into your fold. Don't be authoritative and don't say, I'm old enough and I know better mm -hmm. and you just need to sit there and listen to me. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't work. They need to have a voice yeah. also and they need to be heard. They need to be heard. Okay. And also, when, it, when they're confronted with things that you obviously don't have, are not equipped to deal with, mm -hmm. refer. Mm -hmm. You know, bring someone in that will be able to talk to them, that will be able to trust. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. would bring about a sense of security within the child mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say that, you know what, mom or dad is with me. They get me. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And Dolly? I, I would say the key is communicating, mm -hmm. communicating with your child. And just something we didn't touch on, and I'd just like to mention it, it quickly, is that look at those aspects of your child that the child is actually good at mm -hmm. and build on that. Yes. 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 Find the talents. Yes. You need to also, beside preventing the negativity, you need to de develop a positive attitude, mm -hmm. a positive self-concept. Mm -hmm. And you do that by enhancing your children's talents yes. and gifts. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And, and being positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Shukran, I really appreciate you coming through today and enhancing all our viewers' um, intellect and knowledge on the, on the topic. Inshallah, we will take this responsibility a little bit more serious when it comes to our children, that they are not just pot plants with water and sand that needs to grow up and sunlight, but that we've got a huge trust in our hands to shape them, to yes. form them, to nurture them, so that we can um, have future leaders, adults that are positive, that mm. positively contribute to this is to society to the world at large and like you both have rightfully said we need to pep up our children's ego in a way that is balanced and in harmony not over excessively or break them down mm -hmm. so yes what we say we need to become aware of the way we behave all these things impact on our children and inshallah may we take all these advices that we have shared you um, with with all of our viewers today and take it to our children and make that difference so know your child love your child and be there for your child from adila assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh